Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace. Welcome to my cooking show, The Natural Cook. I'm Anna Gershenson. As we are moving into a colder season, I'm going to start cooking food that is more comforting, that will be warming you up. And for today, I chose Thai coconut curry with cauliflower and peas. And this is um, just nutritional powerhouse with cruciferous cauliflower with leeks that are in the alien family and garlic in the same family that has so many qualities that will boost your health and also warm you up, all the spices that we're going to use today. So first, let me start with, with a leek. Leek is a vegetable that probably not too many people use in their cooking. Uh, it's, it's kind of um, uh, looks like, what am I going to do with it? So here I am to tell you what. First of all, we use the pale part of leek, even though there are nutrients throughout. So you can actually use the leaves, to, you can save them and free, put them in your freezer and save them when, when you're making like a chicken soup or, or beef stock and add them. But we are going to remove these uh, darker sides and we'll expose the lighter side that is edible for, for this dish. So as you can see, I'm just rotating and kind of shedding the layers because just like the onion, leeks contains, of many, is, contains very many layers and here it's already much lighter. So I'm going to put it aside. And what happens when I start removing these leeks is that it exposes the dirt. There is a lot of dirt because leeks grow in sand. So there's a lot of dirt that you don't want to end up in your food. So there are different methods of cleaning the leek. I will explain to you how you can go about it and you can decide what you are going to do. So I'm going to now just slice it all the way down to the root horizontally so that I can open up these layers and I can, uh, I don't have a sink here, but you can wash it under the running water or you can just put it into this water to squish it, to sw uh, swish it and to release the dirt. And you can see that there is, there is really like, some of them are really, really sandy. This happens to be a fairly, fairly clean leak. What you can also do if you don't want to do it this way you can cut it and then put everything into cold water and then pull it out and all the sand and dirt are going to be dislodged. So now we are just, we will slice it into thin pieces and it's going to cook very quickly. The leek is not um, a very hardy vegetable. So it's not, it doesn't take a long time to cook. It cooks faster than the onion. It is a gentler vegetable. And also it goes well into dishes because of its milder, gentler flavor. It goes into dishes where you don't want to have a stronger onion flavor. So um, it has, you know, polyphenols and it has antioxidants and, and they are definitely milder than um, in the white onion, like the strongest they would be in the red onion. So, but here we want to have a mild flavored dish. Our spices are going to be kicking in, but the vegetables are not going to be contributing too, too much to this. 
So after our leek is sliced, I will show you how to, um, to, how to dislodge your cauliflower. We buy cauliflower um, together with its leaves. And it's very important when you buy cauliflower to make sure that um, it's not covered with any dark spots that it is in good fresh condition, that you have the leaves that are green and fresh and they are holding the cauliflower together. And with the leeks, the same thing. When you are buying the leeks, you want to make sure that they are not cracked, they are not yellowish, they are not limp. And you will store them in the refrigerator in a, in a loose plastic bag and once they are cooked, they don't really keep for a long time, but um, they are really, really delicious. So now that our leeks are cut, um, I actually will proceed with beginning to cook because I want to make sure that we manage everything in the time that is allotted to us. So besides the leeks, the things that will go um, for flavoring and, f and, for, and to give us this extra nutrition is the garlic and ginger. And you know, I talked a lot about the benefits of garlic and ginger, how wonderful they are for us. So after we peel the garlic, I just focus a little bit on um, when garlic is young, you don't really have, you don't have this sprout, you know, and the, the older it is, the darker the sprout gets. And you want to get rid of it because the sprout is really bitter and you don't want to have that bitterness in your food. So I'll remove the sprout and then I will just um, chop up this garlic. I already have some prepared so that we can start cooking. So, so garlic is now next to, to the leek. And as I said, they are in the same family. They are in the alien family that is really fantastic. It tastes good, it smells good, and it's so good for your health. Let's add some canola oil, just like about a tablespoon of canola oil. And make sure that canola oil is either it says non-GMO or it says on the bottle organic because all canola oil is genetically modified and you don't want to go there. You really want to avoid genetically modified um, foods because it hasn't been studied how they interfere with your health and there are things happening that I think are coming from genetically modified foods that we get allergies and sensitivities to food. So let's start increasing our heat a little bit, adding garlic and ginger that I chopped already. Um, and also our leeks. They will all saute together. And before I start working with my cauliflower, I want to show you, talk a little bit about the chemistry of fish cooking. So fish is a protein. And so we, you probably have noticed that when we cook fish, then you have these kinds of like um, beading happening on the surface when fish starts getting ready, so you know that it's getting ready, but it doesn't really look very appealing. So what we do to avoid this from happening, we will brine our fish. You will, you will take maybe um, like a cup of water, add a tablespoon of salt, that, that if you need more, then that's the ratio. And then you will add it to your fish and you will let it sit for about 10 minutes. Okay, so while this is cooking, let's add a little bit of salt. As you know, I always like seasoning food as I go. So salt goes in right away. We will allow this to soften and then we will add our spices because um, we want to activate them by cooking them together with some fat in these, veg in these vegetables. So let's work with our fish. I have a cup and a half of water here. So I will use one and a half tablespoons of salt. 
add it, um, dissolve, and pour it over the fish and let it sit. Then after it sits, what will be happening is that um, the muscle fibers that are close to the surface of the fish will be kind of salt will be kind of dissolving it and so they will be uh, coagulating as they are cooking and not really giving out all of this white stuff. Okay, so um, this is pretty soft already so we will add our spices and today we are using curry and curry is really not one single spice. Curry is kind of a creation, a Western creation. It is a combination of many different spices and it comes to us from Indian cooking. I'm going to put about one and a half teaspoons of curry. So it, it, it goes back to about 18th century when um, Indian merchants wanted to have this ready-made powder for, for the British colonialists to take back to Britain. So they were mixing them together and so we call it curry now, but it's really a combination of very many different spices, including cardamom and allspice and cinnamon and, and nutmeg. There are very, very many different spices that you can make a combination of and people are actually pride themselves on making their own uh, curry combinations. Then we will add some um, cinnamon. Okay. And uh, salt is there already. So let's mix it. And it cooks very nicely. It's really very inviting smell and you of course you can being in the kitchen you can call it that you are experiencing aromatherapy because you're inhaling all these wonderful wonderful smells and it's very relaxing here okay so now the fish is soaking and I'll show you what we'll do, be doing with cauliflower because it cauliflower is also going to go into um, into our curry so first, I will remove the green part, the stem. So I'll cut it off, and, and the smaller knife works better here because it's easier to penetrate into the depth of the cauliflower with a smaller knife. And so I will um, put this away, and you see now the core is open. And what I will do is I will just go with my, with my um, knife inside into the depth and, and I start rotating it. And also make sure to hold your cauliflower really tightly so that it doesn't slip away. And in the meantime, you're taking the core out and making it easier for yourself to release the florets. And when you are storing the cauliflower in the refrigerator, make sure that you are storing it with the floret um, side up because you don't want the extra moisture to be accumulating and to start building in the mold. When you have it sitting on the stem, then there is a much better chance of it um, not, not this liquid not being condensing there. Okay, so now that we have separated our cauliflower, all we have to do is just to cut it into one inch pieces and then steam it. So um, I have already pre-steamed my cauliflower. However, uh, let me tell you that um, the, the compounds, the polyphenols and and the, the, the compounds that are in cauliflower, uh, they disappear very quickly if you are boiling it. For example, if you steam cauliflower for 10 minutes, you will preserve more of its nutrients versus boiling it just for three minutes. So 
preferred method is uh, kind of um, cooking, cooking like frying, steaming sort of, so that you don't really have to put it into water at all, but steaming is definitely preferred. So what I'm going to do is, since I already prepared cauliflower here, what I'm going to do is just um, show you that, you know, we cut it into a kind of like this size pieces so that they are convenient for your consumption. And, um, and then we will put it into a steamer basket, steam it for about 10 minutes, make sure that it's soft. And then you can even make it in advance. Like if you want to have something ready, then you just make it in advance, have it in the refrigerator waiting for you, and then you don't have to deal with that part. Or you can prepare florets in advance. So now, our vegetables are cooking nicely. And what we will do is add the coconut milk. Coconut milk has wonderful flavor, and I'm using a full-fat coconut milk here. You can use low-fat if you want to, but I prefer full-fat because it has more flavor, and it has, of course, these wonderful fats that are so good for you and that you, you want to include into your cooking. Also, I will add the cauliflower, and the cauliflower at this point is quite tasteless except for it's, you know, authentic cauliflower flavor. So you want to make sure that it all gets coated very nicely. And at this point, you want to add more salt because as vegetables are cooking, they're absorbing the salt from the liquid they are cooking it in. And unless you add that extra salt, it's not really going to uh, taste the way you want it. So. Let cauliflower cook, and we'll add also our peas. And, and fish will go last. We want to make sure that cauliflower absorbs some of this nice flavor. And the fish will go last, because you don't really want to cook the fish too long. You know that the longer you cook fish, the more it um, kind of contracts and becomes uh, tougher. And even though it's cooking in liquid, you still want to cook it just until it's cooked through so that you can taste nice um, and soft flesh, not tough and springy. All right, so at this point, I am going to taste because you have to taste many, many times while you are doing your cooking to make sure that all the flavors that you want to be in your food are there and that the food is to your liking. Also, if you feel that there isn't enough ginger, for example, then the convenient thing is that you can always grate ginger and you can uh, add grated ginger or you can just add grated garlic great, I mean, um, squeeze the ginger juice into it. Okay, now, the fish is going to be cut into cubes. We will put it and dry it, and then we will sprinkle some salt. Let's see. Mm. Okay, it tastes lovely. I think that at this point, I'm happy with the way it tastes. After we add fish, we'll taste it again. So let's dry the fish because we don't want any of that water to end up in our um, curry. It will dilute the flavors. And we'll cut the fish into one inch cubes. And then since it already is salted, we are not going to be salting it. But we will sprinkle some black pepper to season it. You want the cubes to be about the same size. And I'm using white flesh fish. Um, like you can use hake, which is a very sweet fish. I like it if I can get my hands on it. This is cod. You can use halibut, just neutral kind of fish. And of course, um, it is 
a fish that is wild caught, which I always prefer to farm raised because unless the farm raised fish that you are buying that you know where it's coming from and how it was raised, it's, um, you can end up ingesting a lot of things that are not welcome in your diet and have the consequences of it. Okay, so fish is cut into cubes. We will sprinkle it with salt. I mean with um, um, black pepper. Let me rinse my hands. Okay. Um, you know, spices divide into cooling and warming spices. So for example, black peppercorn is a cooling spice, but all other spices that we're using today in our cooking are warming spices. So these are the kinds of spices that you want to include into your diet when you are um, preparing something in the winter because you want to feel really warm. Okay, so fish is going in. We will make sure that it's coated nicely. You can also add raisins if you like to have, you know, something on the sweeter side. Peas are sweet as well, but raisins will add, you know, that kind of like punch of sweetness. White raisins I prefer. I don't like having black raisins, dark raisins in this kind of dish. Okay, so another thing that I will add for flavor is the zest of mandarin and also mandarin juice. So I'll take my mandarin and microplane and I will zest and it will add lovely aroma and combine very nicely with our spices and add a little bit of acidity and sweetness from the juice. So let's take one more. I really like having these flavors mingle there and combine with our spices and make it really, really yummy. Okay, now you will see that mandarins and oranges will be um, appearing more and more frequently in our markets. So they will be more flavorful. And of course, they are full of vitamins, so it's a very welcome food. So you can just eat it by itself, or you, you can add it to whatever you are cooking, to your dishes. All right, now time to mix and taste. Make sure that everything is coated, that um, the fish, some fish that's on the surface goes on the bottom so that it can get cooked as well. Okay, it looks really lovely. The colors are very gentle. Um, a sprinkling of cilantro will go on top at the end. Cilantro is really kind of a pungent, unexpected burst of flavor that goes very well with, with these spices. So I know that you will really enjoy having, having it if you like it. If not, you can always add scallions. Scallions are also very nice and will be lovely there. Okay, so let's start tasting. All right, I see that fish already is beginning to flake a little bit, which means it's cooked. Definitely now that everything got absorbed, I will add a little more curry. I want more flavor from it and a little more heat from it because it has some peppers to give it heat. I will also add black pepper that I love and add anywhere I can, more salt. And then we'll see what, how it will contribute to the overall dish. Let's mix it together. Let's do it gently because you don't want to break up the fish. 
Okay. All right. Taste. Mm? Now it tastes. It really tastes much better. What I will do is I'll grate a little bit of ginger because it also gives, adds heat and adds this freshness. So, um, grated ginger will just dissolve nicely and add to the flavor. And don't forget to mix it and I think our dish is ready and we can plate it. So, in the meantime, I prepared basmati rice. Um, basmati rice is a lovely accompaniment for this curry. I did a show on Thai rice bowl where we discussed the benefits of basmati rice and why basmati rice is really good for you. You can refresh your memory by watching this episode again. But at the same time, I can tell you that basmati rice is really good because it does not have uh, it does not have the carbs that, that make your blood sugar spike. So this is why it is really great to, um, to use white basmati rice. However, brown is always preferable because of course it has all the nutrients. So let's put it here. Yes, basmati rice I cooked basmati rice in advance, and it's always good to, to soak it to reduce its cooking time. Okay, let's put it back here. All right, so we will put our dish here. We'll chop some cilantro. With cilantro, I love using, let me flip it because we had fish here. We don't want fish to mingle together with our raw food. Okay, also washing the knife. I'll actually use a little knife to make sure that I do not do any kind of cross-contamination. Okay, so let's just chop cilantro, we'll sprinkle it, and then we will put our rice onto the other bowl. See how lovely it looks. Okay, let's take the bowl and get our rice. Okay. All right. Then you can put the rice on the bottom and you can put your curry on top and you will have a lovely, lovely meal that will warm you up, that will be nourishing your body, lifting your spirit, and you will not be afraid of facing the cold of winter. I'm very delighted that you joined me today, and I hope that you will make this dish. Please try it at home, and come and watch my next episode on The Natural Cook with Anna Gershon. Bye-bye. Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace.